Uh, we have we have today with us uh, one of the most prominent actors of the Iris sphere. So uh, thank you very much. Very welcome, uh, Marco Haran. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, do you have any connection with the Spanish-speaking world? Um, none except for huge admiration, I think. And uh, I've traveled quite a bit. I've never gotten to to, uh, to South America, but uh, I've been to Cuba quite a lot. And uh, I'm, I'm completely addicted to Cuba. I love it there. And with Spain itself, I've been, you know, to several different areas. And I, I did the Santiago de Compostela walk, which was... Um, which was an extraordinary way to to see the various regions of Spain and uh, and uh, to engage with it culturally. I think it was it was extraordinary. Yeah. And what are the, the most uh, remarkable differences you find you found between the Spanish culture and the Irish culture? Um, well, this might sound odd, but um, because we're both historically Catholic countries, but I found when I went to Spain Spain and when I was doing the Santiago walk, po possibly it's because of the Santiago walk, but I couldn't believe how central Catholicism had been to Spanish culture. Like, its it visual culture was was Catholic, the paintings, the statues. Uh, w we really, in Ireland, I think all we did was, was just give over control to the church, whereas there was a kind of a... A vast engagement with Catholicism, so I enjoyed that. I loved going to see all the ch the old churches and uh, and that sort of thing. Um, and then the landscape. I just there were great similarities, say, between Galicia and and the west of Ireland, where I'm from, which I really enjoyed, um, except for the eucalyptus trees. But uh, but then the landscapes that as it changed as you went across the north from the Basque region into the the Rioja region, which is extraordinary, the red earth. Um, so all of that was fascinating, I think. And going back to Cuba, as far as I know, you were there uh, as a part of, a, of one of your projects. Yeah. You one of yeah. your writing projects. Yeah, I went there um, and I... I it's, an, it's a very addictive place to go. When you go there, it's, it's so full on, it hits you hard. The, the sounds, the music, the, uh, the nightlife, the people there are incredibly friendly and full on and, and it seems confident and uh, so I went there and then I went back with this idea for this script that I've written which is set in the sort of uh, the drag world, the, the, the travesties and the, the transgender world and the gay underbelly of, of Havana and it's, it's about a father-son who is kind of a love story between a father and a son who get to know each other after a, a very big break and the son is is quite effeminate and he performs as a drag queen and the father is not at all like that and it's them trying to get to understand each other so it seemed like a like an extraordinary setting to i mean part of part of the reason i wanted to to write it was just to to stay in havana for as long as possible <laughs> and to get paid to do it so that, that was great so we're in the process of trying to make that at the moment i also engaging with with some of the female singers especially from the 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 canon of, of of Cuban music like Celeste Mendoza or Elena Burka or La Lupe, these just extraordinary powerful women who sang. As, I, I found that the love songs in Cuba are so interesting because they're all about, I tore the door from the hinges and I sent you out and I demanded you never come back and you're back. <laughs> and I loved the drama of them. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah, Cuba is everything about passion. There. Oh, it's passion, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you are probably one of the more versatile authors we have here in the Isla Festival. Could you tell us a little bit about all of the aspects of your work, what mm. you write? Because you are uh, an actor as well, and yeah. you write the scripts for TV and cinema and also sort of stories. Yeah, and uh, I write for the theatre as well. Um, I started out, um, I come from the west of Ireland and uh, I come from a very large family and I think that part of the the reason that I became a storyteller is that, you know, when you're in a large family, you tend to disappear unless you're able to to find a trick that that, uh, that draws people's attention. So, you know, I, I became a storyteller of sorts and I decided to become an actor and I went to drama school and and that gradually led on. I didn't write till I was about 30, but but I was collecting stories as I went along. I was always a great diary keeper. I still keep a diary every day. I write down what I see on the street and, and what goes on in the world around me. And uh, 
I just enjoy telling stories. I enjoy the effect it has on people. And that just moved from standing up on stage and performing them to sitting at home and writing them. And uh, I was lucky in that the first screenplay I wrote got made. And um, so I've had, you know, two films made and a, a TV series made. And I've had numerous plays performed. You know, I've been lucky in my writing life as, as well as everything else. But it's all the same process as far as I'm concerned. Acting and writing, it's all the same thing. It's making up stories and engaging with characters. And what term would describe you better? A storyteller could be, or what do you consider yourself as an actor who writes, as a writer who performs sometimes? It depends on the day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm a writer who acts. Yes. Uh, yeah. A writer who acts act sometimes. Okay. And when you are writing, mm -hmm and you are creating mm -hmm. your characters. Yeah. Is your actor there helping you to, to, to lead the... Yeah, but I mean, I mean, the actors come at character in a very sp specific way, in that they try and invest it, they try and feel it physically, they try and think about what words mean when they speak them as a character, etc. So that is always there. Also, when I write, I usually write with a, a particular director in mind. I usually work for a particular director when I'm writing. You know, it depends on who. So when I'm finished a draft of a script, I call around to their house usually, and I sit and I read the whole script to them, and I act out all the bits of it, because I'm thinking about it and acting it out as I go along. So part of part of the creation of the of the words in the script is performative you know it is it is about understanding that if they say that at the particular time and then get up from a table and walk away it means something because you know as a as a as an actor you think about those things so it's and um, what about directing have you ever think about go as one step further um yeah yeah uh, i don't think i'd ever direct a film um, it's too technical and you have to be there all the time. <laughs> I'm very lazy. Um, I don't like turning up every day for work. Uh, and I like to be on my own. I'm quite a solitary person. Um, and other people, other people really frustrate me, especially if I've, you know, if I have a vision for something, you know, a scene in my head, and if I can't get it across, I know it's my fault and I'll work and work until I'm able to get it or get as close as possible. But if I was standing with people and it wasn't been able, I, I'd end up shouting at people and it would be really awful. So I, I'd be terrible. I'd be a terrible director. I'd make terrible films. But I have directed for the theatre and uh, I've really enjoyed that process because I love actors. I love hanging out with actors and uh, I have great respect for actors. And, and watching actors take words off a page and embody those is, is a great joy. So theatre is easier. But I, I mean, I've never directed a huge show for the theatre and any time it starts getting technical where you're adding lights and music and sound and video projection and and people are talking about i don't know megapixels and this that and the other i just go i stop thinking <laughs> about acting uh, what are the main differences that uh, makes a difference between a, a, a theater actor and a cinema actor because sometimes uh, one actor is very good in, in, in theatre, but it's not that good in cinema. Yeah, that can be, and, and vice versa, you vice know. Versa. I think, I think that all creation is the same process. It's the same, it's the same about trying to empathise with character and embody character. So, with theatre, you rehearse and you rehearse the bits and you get each moment right and then you build it so that you put this moment this moment together and then you build it and suddenly after five weeks or six weeks you're able to run a whole story from start to finish and you move into a theatre space that's quite large so you have to build it and build it and build it. With cinema, what you're doing is you're filming the rehearsal. So you're filming the moment, you get the moment right, you film it, finished and you move on. So that's the difference. Uh, but I think it's the exact same process. It's the exact same process. Are these kind of fragments? Yeah, it's fragments. I think that sometimes actors get afraid of the cinema, especially if they're theatre actors. They're afraid that they're going to project too large or they're going to... And that holds them back. And you can see there's that whole thing that people say, you know, less is more and practically do nothing. But it's all about thinking. You have to, be, you have to keep thinking or else the audience won't be able to understand what you're doing. I think. And do you have an, uh, any kind of ritual when you want to go to the stage? When I go to the stage, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God, until 
<laughs> until I'm about to set foot on a stage and then I go holy Mary Virgin please help me help me so you have what the religion believes right there oh the... god well because to step foot on th- in front of a stage full of people and be able to learn a huge amount of lines and to be able to tell a story in front of people it's an act of faith you know you're you're stepping out in front of them and you're going you don't know whether you're going to be able to remember and you don't know whether you're going to be able to do anything so it is you know it can be quite terrifying so there are rituals for the first preview if something happens during a first preview like when i go up backstage if i walk up and down three times before i go on on the first preview for the rest of the run i have to walk up and down three times That's before fair. i go on. everything becomes a ritual because this fear you know it could be very i'm te- i get terrified okay as i said you are one of the more prominent actors in <laughs> ireland and you are very successful to have uh, been very successful in, uh, in these other fields. What advice would you give to a young artist who want to start in any of other of those fields you are doing now? Um, young writers especially would come up to me and say, how do you become a writer? And I say, you write. Simple as that. As to all the other stuff that goes on, that's all just business. You know, whether you get published or whether you get your play on or, you know, that can be luck and blah, blah. But nothing will stop your writing. If you want to be a writer, write. A lot of people wait and go, well, I want somebody to come along and pay me to do something. And I'm like, just write. If it's what, if you want to write, write. Um, actors, if you come out of drama school and people aren't offering you work, make your own work. Do your own plays or get a group of friends together and stage stuff. It's what I did when I was younger. It's what I think a lot of actors do. Sometimes, you know, When I did, when I left drama school, I didn't get work for about three or four years. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and uh, but I think that time sitting around, being unemployed, and maybe doing a small show here or a small show there was invaluable because it allowed me to read books, keep my diary, <laughs> and go and see lots of plays. And uh, that was all part of my training, I think. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure to have Thank you. Thank you very much, and it's been a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.